You know, in the aftermath of last week's episode, I kind of went, what could they possibly do to end the season? Then, some people in my comment section were saying, hey, there's going to be a beach episode. There's going to be something really good at the end, right? We're going to be eating good tonight. So I go, okay, I trust my comment section for the most part. And I go, all right, let's see what this episode has in store for us because it is the last episode. And I got to say, this episode was pretty all right in my books. A nice little way to end the season. Quite a bit of fan service, a nice big battle, and generally speaking, hinting at what is to come in the future. Whether we'll see that future is up for debate. <clears throat> so, you might be thinking, how did we get to this beach episode? What unfolded in this glorious concoction of fan service, swimsuits, and octopus? What? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm going to be rolling through the episode. So basically, it was hinted at last episode there was going to be a beach episode because two of the characters, Leo and failed idol girl, went to go buy swimsuits. I'm like, okay. And we start the scene, we start the whole episode off with, you know, we're in the, you know, we're in the locker room. And we get to see all the girls change into their swimwear. We get to see all the jiggles. We get to see all the curves. Thank you! Not everything, but you get as much as you can. And obviously, the um, most risque out of all of them happened to be Utena, who got a swimsuit from Kiwi. And I can already imagine some of you might be going, Stop it. Get some help. You would be correct, because Utena was wearing a micro bikini because Kiwis thought that was good for her. Everybody obviously went, holy shit, you are exposing a lot of skin there, girl. And she changed into something a bit more Utena. And we kind of have a fun beach episode where they interact, you know, the evil magical girls in their civilian identities interact with the good magical girls in their civilian identities. And it's a fun, grand old time. Now, the big moment among this little, uh, you know, this whole beach thing was a scene between Bubbles and Utena. Oh shit, here we go again. Bubbles, girl, why are you thinking about that at a beach? And um, she's like, damn, how do I bring this up without sounding weird? Said every fucking dude ever in his life. What the fuck is this? We then skip over to the big, I guess you could say, uh, catalyst for the whole episode, which is Utena probably drawing the shortest uh, stick in the draw, or stick in the lot, I should say. Has to go get drinks for everybody. I'm going to assume that's what happened, but, you know, she could have just done it out of being nice. It is Utena we're talking about here. Go get drinks for everybody. However, she gets cut in line. And um, as you can imagine, Kiwi did not take too well to this. <laughs> This dumbass decided, let me use my magical girl powers and threaten these two these two chicks, and I'm just going, You blew it! I get you're horny for Utena, but chill the fuck out. And as you can imagine, somebody screamed and said, here are the evil magical girls, or here's one of the evil magical girls. And a fight ensues, and obviously Utena's really disappointed that this happened because she's like, I just wanted a fucking vacation. I wanted a day off. Well, she got at least some, at least she got something out of this vacation. So, a fight ensues between the evil magical girls and the good magical girls, right? Now, what happens is Utena decides to use her riding crop and smacks a octopus without anybody seeing it because she's gotten that good with her powers and turned it into a giant octopus. This thing did not discriminate in the slightest bit. It attacked both good and evil magical girls. And my God, all I have to say about this scene was uh, for all the bros and the octopus and all, you know, into those kinds of scenes of seeing girls being um, shrung up by tentacles, I will promise you, you will enjoy it. But wait! Sulfur doesn't like shit like that. Sulfur pretty much looked the most vulnerable I've ever seen her look. Oh my god, I used her real name. I meant Buttercup. <laughs> now, here's somebody is missing, however, from this thing. Also, we did get to see um, some, uh, I guess she, I guess some nice moments seeing, you know, uh, Leo and failed idol girl being pressed up against each other with some tentacles surrounding them. But hey, um, there's one person missing, however, from this group. And that is Bubbles. 
you know, we have a final confrontation, essentially, between Utena and Bubbles. But before I talk about the big fight between Utena and Bubbles, I actually want to talk about this, like, really comedic moment I enjoyed, right? Unlike most Marvel humor these days. Daddy, chill. Where, essentially, what happened is both failed Idol Girl and Leo were just kind of, like, laying on the sand in between the, the two fighters, right? Leo was face down, ass up, literally, on the sand, while Idol Girl was, I think, she was laid out, like, sprawled out or whatever it was and then here comes along alice who's on top of her giant monstrous teddy bear and picks them up and collects them up and basically clears the fight uh clears like the arena for them and i found that incredibly entertaining And I gotta say, I, I really do enjoy the humor in this show for the most part. Most of the jokes for me land. And in this instance, I really think it landed pretty damn well. And now I believe it's time to finally talk about the giant battle between Utena and... Genobly! Mistress versus Masochist. Who will win? Spoiler alert. But, however, during this battle, Bubbles decides to unleash her new maiden form, right? The, ma the form that we got to see at the very tail end of her, you know, the confrontation with uh, Donbass. So we got to see that unfold, and I gotta say, it was a nice battle, honest to God, and we got to see some, uh, or rather, we got some revelations about, essentially, Bubbles' training, which we all kind of remember from the earlier in the season, right, that they took some time off to go into the forest and train and, and become stronger. Essentially, what it boiled down to was, Bubbles' training was not necessarily about becoming more powerful or anything of that nature. No, it was all about the mental game. It was all about, hey, let me keep my masochist urges in control. Because good lord, if I see Utena again... Just getting a taste of them. I'm like, you know, I'm tired of getting a taste of them. I want the whole load. Disgusting. Right, so that's kind of why we kind of got to see that training unfold before our very eyes. The fruits of her labor, as they might say. So, some of you might be asking, did Bubbles hold up? And all I have to say is, she damn well did. You know, she could have lost it, right? She could have willingly just, you know, bent over backwards for Utena and just literally asked, slap me harder, mistress. But she didn't. She kept back those urges. And look, man, she managed to win the fight. Believe it or not, Bubbles managed to win this fight against Utena and her crew. And all I have to say is, I'm proud of the bitch. Oh my... And you might be thinking, is that where the episode ends? Well, no, there's actually two scenes left after this one. So the second to last scene is kind of like a, a wrap up scene, right? It's, you know, they're, it's the nighttime at the beach and everybody's kind of having a fun time with fireworks and talking and generally speaking, having a good time. They obviously had, you know, explanations to be like, oh, this is why I was missing during the magical girl fight. You know, but it was it was generally a nice wholesome moment, right? In you know, which is in stark contrast to the lewd and and fan service stuff we just had like five minutes ago in the episode. As for the final scene, well, it's kind of like a uh, how shall we say the final scene is reminiscent of like a Saturday morning slash Friday night cartoon. And what I mean by that is, you know, we end the episode essentially with a a battle right, or the beginnings of a battle between Utena's, like, e you know, squad of evil magical girls and the good magical girls. We obviously don't see, you know, how the fight goes or anything like that. All it's supposed to show you is, hey, this is like the be the continuation of their fight. This is going to be an ongoing thing, right? We've only just begun, essentially. Begun. The Clone War has. Overall, that's it. Like, there's nothing more else to it. I Like I said, I did like it. I liked the battle. Honest to God, it was a fun, enjoyable battle. I, uh, look, man, I'm going to say yes to the fans here and go, I enjoyed it, right? It's, it's, this is a raunchy battle comedy, you know, in the same vein as I think like High School DxD, for example. And you know what? I'm kind of glad we got to see the whole outfit for Bubbles and seeing what does it look like. There was a little bit of a thing that I kind of noticed with it, which was, um, if you don't, if you don't remember this, or rather, this goes back to like episode two or three when she was originally like tied up. Uh. Not just tied up, but blindfolded. 
<clears throat> is that when she was transforming into her maiden's outfit, part of like her face got like wrapped up, like she was blinded in the sense. So I'm thinking that's like an acknowledgement of like what had happened between her and uh, Utena like that early on. And plus she's wearing like a maiden, like a shrine maiden outfit. So like I said, I'm pretty sure it's hinting at that whole thing. And she even acknowledges the whole what happened Ep you know, back in episode 7, like midway through the season. I'm going to keep this brief. I don't have much else to say about it. I really did enjoy this episode overall, and I think it was a decent way to end the season. I, you know, I would have preferred if like episode 11, or no, yeah, episode 11 was the way the season ended, but you know, this is a fine way to do it. Not great, but it's not terrible. Like, I think this is a decent way to end the season as a whole. And some of you may be thinking, I wonder what would have happened if Uten had actually wore that micro bikini the entire time. But wait, there's more. I'm here to tell you right now, we don't care. Let me tell, right, let me tell you <laughs> We don't care. Jerry, 